Every year, around 3,500 babies in the United States die suddenly and unexpectedly while they're sleeping. Most of these tragic deaths are due to sudden infant death syndrome CIDS, or accidental deaths from suffocation or strangulation. Although there's no guaranteed way to prevent SIDS, research tells us that a safe sleep environment can help reduce your baby's risk of CIDS. A safe sleep environment lowers the risk of all sleep-related infant deaths. Here are some ways you can help create a safe sleep environment. Before we begin, if you are new here, click the subscribe button for more videos like this and comment below, I subscribed, so we can welcome you. Let's begin. Number 1. Safe sleep for your baby. Your baby needs sleep, and so do you. You'll both sleep easier if you know what the sleep risks are and how best to keep your little ones safe while they slumber. Number 2. Sleeping risks. All babies under one year old are at risk for sudden infant death syndrome, especially those younger than six months. It has been called crib death because it occurs while baby is sleeping in the crib. It isn't caused by an infection or a medication, and it can't be spread. It's listed as the cause of death if there's no other explanation. Certain things increase the chances of it. These include premature birth, exposure to alcohol or drugs before birth, exposure to smoking before or after birth, infection. It's unclear if having a sibling who died of SIDS increases the risk. Sometimes a baby's airway becomes blocked while they sleep. This can lead to sudden unexpected infant death. Number 3. Room Sharing, Not Bed Sharing The American Academy of Pediatrics now says babies should sleep in their parents' room for the first six months, or better yet, until their first birthday. New statistics say room sharing can lower the risk of SIDS by as much as 50%. It's easier to keep an eye on your baby, comfort them, and feed them. But they need their own safe space, a bassinet, crib, or co-sleeper. Babies should not sleep in bed with their parents. That increases the risk that the child's breathing could get cut off, and it's even more dangerous if you smoke, drink, or take drugs. Number 4. Campaign for Safe Sleep The National Institutes of Health has a public education campaign called Safe to Sleep to reach and inform parents and other caregivers. A lot goes into creating and keeping a secure sleep environment. Ask your pediatrician about safe sleep at your newborn's first doctor visit. Number 5. Secure Bedding Your baby should rest in a crib, co-sleeper, or bassinet that is free of everything except your baby. That means no bumper pads, quilts, blankets, pillows, soft toys, positioning devices, or reachable toys with strings. Make sure the mattress is firm and flat, and always use a tightly fitted sheet. Soft bedding, above or below your child, can block their airways. Before we go further, I would like to introduce the Naturopedic Organic Baby Mattress. This mattress combines every safety feature you could want in one crib mattress, an excellent choice for parents seeking to eliminate potentially harmful chemicals and allergens. Features include an organic cotton cover, organic cotton fill, seamless waterproof edges, two-stage dual firmness edge support, and a patented easy-to-clean waterproof surface. The breathable layer is removable and washable and also acts as a built-in mattress protector. This mattress is lightweight for easy sheet changes. This mattress fits the full crib and toddler bed forms of wave, cloud, candy cloud, snow, and mountain. Check out the link in the description for more details. Number 6. Less is more. You may see cribs with stuffed animals, other toys, or pillows in magazines and on TV. They might look cute, but they aren't safe for your little one. Number 7. Safe sleep position. Don't let your baby nap on couches, swings, or any place beside their bed. Every time you put your infant down to get shut eye, place them in their crib, bassinet, or co-sleeper with their face upward. That's how your baby should sleep until they can roll from back to front and front to back. Sleep positioners, like wedges or rolled blankets, may seem like a good idea, but they can move out of place and get in the way of your child's breathing. Because of the way babies are built, a healthy infant is less likely to choke when on their back, despite what you may have heard. They are more able to cough out or swallow anything they spit up. Number 8. Clothes and Covers When dressing your baby for bedtime, a one-piece sleeper or sleep sack is the best choice. Depending on the season, it can be lightweight or thick. It's best not to use a blanket at all. The wearable blanket should keep them warm. Do not put the baby to sleep in a swaddling blanket. 
Number 9. Brace Feeding and Pacifiers One of the strongest ways to help prevent SIDS is by breastfeeding your baby. Several studies show that infants who are breastfed, even for a short time, are less likely to get SIDS. Do not breastfeed while sitting in a chair or on a couch if you are tired and in danger of falling asleep yourself. Pacifiers also lower the risk of SIDS. If you plan to breastfeed, don't introduce a pacifier until you know your baby is doing well with nursing. Never hang the pacifier around their neck or attach it to their clothes while they sleep. And there's no need to put it back in their mouth after they have fallen asleep. Number 10. Talk to all caregivers. Don't assume someone who's caring for your baby knows how important it is to follow the safe to sleep guidelines. Go over those steps with nannies, babysitters, grandparents, and other friends and relatives who care for the infant. Make sure they know they always have to follow the rules. You can even post them in the nursery if you feel better. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more.